Hello everyone, welcome to the RoseSync 2.0 beta training. Uh, we're going to go over how to set up and install the beta, how to work with 2.0 applications, and then how to work with RoseSync. The first thing you need to do is install the RoseSync and Rhodes gems. You can see on my screen here, uh, run the command gem install RoseSync dash dash pre. This will then install RoseSync 2.0, and you'll see the command successfully installed RoseSync 2.0 beta. Then you want to do the same command for Rhodes, and that will download and install the Rhodes gems. One important thing you need to do after you have installed the gems is run the Rhodes setup. This is how you uh, how you set up roads with your various SDKs that you are going to be building with. So we'll do that now. Roads setup. It's going to ask you questions about where the various installation packages are, or the various installed uh, SDKs for the different platforms. The first one is Java is required for all platforms because we use various Java tools in our build script. Uh, this is the guess and usually the guess is correct. It needs to be pointing to a JDK and not a JRE. So we'll just leave it with a guess. It's asking for our Android SDK path. So I will go ahead and open up a new terminal here and go to where I have ins downloaded and installed that. So this is where my Android SDK is and this will allow us to build for Android. So we'll put that here. It's now asking for our Android NDK path and I have that ins installed here as well. So there's a question here, is Rhodes, M is Rhodes limited to the Android 1.5 SDK? Uh, no, the and Rhodes works with Android 1.5 through 2.2. Uh, the prompt still says 1.5, but that is from before Android put everything into one SDK location. Now you just need to point to the base SDK path. Uh, another question here is, what is an NDK? NDK stands for the Native Developer Kit. Uh, it is what Android provides to build applications natively. Uh, Rhodes uses that to compile parts of the Rhodes platform as it is being built. And so if you want to build for Android, you need to download both the SDK and the NDK. It's also asking us for Windows Mobile 6. Uh, because we're working on a Mac, we don't have Windows Mobile 6, so we're just going to skip. Uh, it's going to ask for the BlackBerry JDE uh, because we don't have BlackBerry installed. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just skip that. And it says here, if you have want to build with other BlackBerry SDK versions, it points a link to this rowbuild.yaml. The rowbuild.yaml is where all of the SDK configurations are. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that right now. We'll open up this file here. And you can see it has various uh, SDKs configurations. Okay, someone is getting an uh, invalid Android 1.5 SDK path. Let's go through setting up the Android SDK. We'll 
We'll go to the Android SDK folder. This is where you unzip it. Uh, one thing that you need to do is take a look at the SDK README. Uh, because what happens is when you download the package from Google, it doesn't have any of the Android SDKs downloaded. It is just the installer. So if we run Android here, it will open up the SDK manager. If you go to this link here called Available Packages, it will show you all the packages that are available. Uh, and so you need to download one of these APIs. So I have installed 1.5, 1.6, 2.0, and 2.1. The minimum you need installed is 2.5. However, it will work with all versions. Once you've selected one of these and installed, then you would be able to use the Android SDK. So moving back to our row build YAML here, the key portion here is this paths section. This is where all the paths are defined for your Android SDKs, Java SDKs, Blackberry, etc. So if you want to change it later, you can rerun your road setup or you can edit this file directly. And you see Android NDK is specified here is what we had entered. Our Android SDK here. If we had Blackberry it would go in this section here. You can have 4.6, 4.2. Uh, any of the BlackBerry SDKs since 4.2 do work. Uh, so once we have our road build YAML set up, that means we're able to build Rhodes applications. So what we're going to do is go to a folder here where we're going to build our application. I'm going to put it in my apps folder. So we're going to generate an application and we're going to call it our store. So to generate a Rhodes application, we use a command line utility called Rogen. So we're going to say Rogen, and we won't give it any parameters right now, and it will display us a help page. This shows all the available generators for our application, uh, app, model, and spec. So the first thing that we want to generate is an app. So we will say Rogen app, and it'll give us uh, some more help here of what Rogen app takes. We're just going to go with the basic and give it, uh, just pass it in a name since that's the only required property. So we'll say Rogen App Store. You can see it generates several files, which is the basics of our Rhodes application. So we'll open up this directory here and take a look at the file structure. So you can see on the right we have three files and three folders rowconfig.txt, which is configuration for your Rhodes application, where your application starts, where the settings controller is, what your sync server is, uh, various logging settings. And it, it basically is the, the core configuration for your application. The other files here are our rake file which you don't have to edit. This is a default, so you can do builds from your applications folder. And a build.yaml. The build.yaml is build time configuration, as composed to the row config.txt, which is a runtime configuration. So in the build.yaml, you will set the settings such as the version of your application, 
the name of your application, if you're going to include extensions with your application, or what various settings that you're going to use to build. And this all is happens at build time. Uh, so once you've built your application, you cannot change these settings. Uh, the folders here are very similar to what you would have in a Rails application. You have a public folder, which is all of your static resources. Rhodes comes with some default CSS, JavaScript, and images. And when you do the generation, that is the CSS, images, and JavaScript used with the default styles. The icon folder is what the icon is displayed for your application when you install it on the device. Um, Dot .ico is for Windows Mobile, and the dot .png is for all other platforms. So you put your icon in here, when you build your application, that's bundled with it and displayed on the device. The final folder is the app folder. The app folder is the real meat of your application, is where all your Ruby code is, where all of your uh, views are, your controllers, etc. Because we just did a Rojan app, it's very basic. You have your index page, which is a simple add links here page. You have your settings controller, which has examples on how to do the basic sync methods. And you have your application helpers, which are just methods that are used in your application uh, things like display, blanks, strip braces, etc, etc. That's basically just basic helper functions that we have provided uh, that we found useful. If we run this application, we will see that it is very basic and it doesn't do much. So let's run a rake-t. That gives us a listing of our tasks. And here's the possible commands that we can run. There's a set of clean commands uh, for each platform. There's a set of device commands. So when you're ready to build your application for a device, you would run one of these commands. And then there's a set of run commands. The run commands are ones you should be very familiar with. It is what you're going to be using in your development to launch your application into an emulator. So we're going to build and run for the iPhone simulator so we can see what our application looks like. So we will run rake run iPhone. The first time you build this, it's going to take a couple minutes because it has to build all of the Rhodes framework. Uh, once that is done the first time, then subsequent builds are very fast. Uh, so what you see here on the screen right now, it's just going and compiling all of our Ruby classes, all of the Ruby interpreter, all of the framework is being built for the iPhone currently. 